This prime minister is violating the rules of the House. Officials in this liberal government were giving millions of dollars to their own companies. Absolute mayhem and chaos today in the House of Commons. Welcome back to Moose and Loose. My name's David. Today we've got Justin Trudeau just becoming completely unhinged, breaking at the seams. He nearly uh, drops a swear word in the House of Commons. He's now going after Pierre Polyev with personal insults. The man is just becoming completely unhinged. He's, an, he's like an enraged badger that's just out of control. So let's get into this. It's because the Prime Minister's carbon tax is forcing new and unjustifiable costs on New Brunswick schools and hospitals that Canadians cannot afford. Will the Prime Minister call a carbon tax election so we can save our schools and hospitals on this tax? Yeah. ...talked again about his opposition to our bringing in uh, uh, an increase on capital <clears throat> gains because we know that asking uh, the wealthy to do a little more so we can deliver more homes for, Can for young Canadians to build that future is what we need to do. The minister is hiking taxes on home builders on doctors, on job creators, and on farmers. And he's also raising taxes on hospitals and schools. The New Brunswick Premier is taking this Prime Minister to court because of the unconstitutional quadrupling carbon tax and the costs it will impose on snow plows, ambulances, heating hospitals and schools, meaning the loss of countless police officers, nurses, doctors and teachers. Instead of defeating the carbon tax in court, why can't we have a carbon tax election so Canadians can axe the tax? There's nothing Trudeau can say against this. Like what he just said, costs of uh, heating hospitals, snow plows, all the vehicles run by the hospitals. It just costs all. Like, there should be exemptions for all that stuff. Even if he wanted to keep this carbon tax, he should have put an exemption on all that stuff. It's so stupid. Mr. Speaker, for the past number of years, multiple conservative premiers have gone after the price on pollution in courts, and they lost at the Supreme Court. The Canadians have decided that uh, price on pollution is the right thing. Uh, we've won multiple elections on that because Canadians know that the only way to build a strong economy is to fight climate change at the same time. The leader of the opposition doesn't get that, doesn't accept that, doesn't understand that abandoning the fight against climate change would hurt Canadians, would hurt our institutions, would hurt people and economic growth right across the country gaslighting trudeau once again and putting words in our mouth trudeau we don't want you look at the polls buddy it's time for you to go pack your bags mr speaker and he concealed from both the courts and from canadians his plan to quadruple the carbon tax right, to 61 right. cents a liter now premier scott Moe of saskatchewan says that this will hit schools with 204 million dollars in carbon taxes and hospitals with 175 million dollars in carbon taxes meaning we will lose doctors teachers and other necessary workers serving canadians instead of forcing premiers to fight to axe the tax in court. Why can't we have a carbon tax election so Canadians can axe the tax? Mr. Speaker, the Conservative leader is proposing that we abandon all the fight against climate change. He wants to take away the Canada carbon rebate that puts more money in the pockets of eight out of ten Canadians, the middle class and people working hard to join it. Even that is not 8 out of 10 Canadians. There is 15 plus million Canadians who don't get that rebate. Thus, that 8 out of 10 would only apply to about less than 20 million Canadians, less than half. And those numbers are skewed. So really, it's like third of the population gets that rebate. Even as we both fight climate change, how are they going to be able to afford jobs into the future when this leader wants to take away the fight against climate change? <laughs> The NDP Liberal government is not worth the cost of food. The food professor estimates that between 2022 and 2025, the cost of food will be up 34%. That's a time that coincides exactly with the NDP Liberal coalition. Coincidentally, the NDP leader's chief spokesman and brother, his company is a lobbyist for Metro. But the food professor blames the increase on carbon taxes carbon taxes on farmers and truckers who bring us our food. Before Canadians go hungry, why won't the Prime Minister allow a carbon tax election so Canadians can axe the tax? Mr. Speaker, farmers across this country are feeling the impacts of the extreme weather events that come from climate change, whether it's droughts or wildfires or floods. Uh, we are seeing the costs of climate change every single day. And we put forward a price on pollution that not only 
brings down emissions and creates more solutions uh, and economic growth. It also puts more money in the pockets of eight out of ten Canadians right across the country. It's the parliamentary budget officer who says that. We're going to continue to fight climate change. While he did not say that. Those are lies. He's, he, he's dropped his winter federal backstop applies. Leader opposite wants to abandon the fight against climate change. The Prime Minister loves to blame the rest of the world for the rampant food price inflation here at home. But the food professor proves that narrative false. He has calculated that food prices have risen 36% faster in Canada than in the United States of America. What does Canada have that the Americans don't have? Two words, carbon tax. So instead of forcing Canadians to line up at food banks, why won't he let them line up to vote in a carbon tax election? Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I, I didn't dare say anything after the last question because I sort of couldn't believe my ears. But here we have the leader of the opposition <laughs> actually quoting some sort of expert, which is a brand new thing for this House of Commons. To rely on facts and data is an excellent thing to hear. Now, perhaps the leader of the opposition will listen to the hundreds of economists and scientists who have pointed out that putting a price on pollution, particularly one that puts more money back in the pockets. Trudeau can't even quote an economist. He can't point out any specific thing. He's like, uh, ooh, I pay off a lot of universities for research. Uh, ooh. This guy is just a disgrace to our country. Uh, I'll take the floor when he's recognized by the speaker. The right honorable <laughs> prime minister. Right, <laughs> sir. Honorable leader of the opposition. expert information for the Prime Minister from the food professor Sylvain Charlebois, who f finds that 13% of Americans live in food insecurity, while here in Canada it's 23%. In other words, Canadians are twice as likely to live in food security after, after food price of inflation has been one-third higher under this Prime Minister's carbon tax regime. Again. Instead of blaming others or forcing Canadians to go hungry, why not a carbon tax election so that Canadians can axe the tax and afford their food? Yeah. Mr. Speaker, while the Leader of the Opposition is playing politics, we're focused on delivering solutions. We're delivering a national school food program that's going to help 400,000 kids have uh, fuller bellies at schools across the country. And Ugh, why does he say fuller bellies? It just sounds gross, like creep Lord Trudeau. Seriously man just use some different language and 400,000 kids like there's 40 million 42 million Canadians people need to be able to buy their food Trudeau and if the leader of the opposition actually cared about food security in this country you might imagine he'd have voted for that instead not only did he vote against it he pretends it doesn't exist he pretends it hasn't happened he's gaslighting Canadians on the things <laughs> we're doing to fight affordability <laughs> challenges instead he's just offering political games Trudeau loves to project. That's his number one thing, whether he realizes he does it or not. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it's a food program without food. <laughs> it hasn't served a single ham sandwich, not a single bowl of craft dinner, not even a piece of broccoli has been forced upon an unwilling kid. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this is a food, this is meant to feed bureaucracy, not feed kids. Meanwhile, there's a 42% increase in the food bank use at, in Mississauga, and 200 million, sir, 2 million Canadians are lined up at food banks. One quarter of children are going hungry after nine years of his carbon taxes. Why can't we have a carbon tax election? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, this campus conservative turned career politician doesn't actually care about Canadians. What he is actually doing is proposing... What you have there is another personal attack. I, I, that's why I said in the previous video. This is their new strategy, just personal attacks on Pierre Paul Ayub. They got nothing left. ...to take money out of the pockets out of eight of the ten Canadians who do better with the Canada carbon rebate while we fight climate change. He has stood against affordability measures. <laughs> Trudeau's just fumbling and bumbling. He's just a mess. The Canadian Trucking Alliance has calculated that the carbon tax will cost $20,000 for every long-haul truck this year alone. 
Now he wants to quadruple the tax, which will grind those trucks to a halt, meaning empty shelves in grocery stores, no parts for factories, and no paychecks for our workers. Instead of doing that, why not call a carbon tax election so that Canadians can axe the tax and save our economy? Like me, you have noticed that the leader of these opposition is particularly full of shameless slogans today. Uh, the reality is uh, he has nothing to offer Canadians. He has that was an interesting plan. Words there, Trudeau. Why don't you say what you're really going to say? Particularly full of shameless slogans. Nothing but political slogans and uh, easy attacks uh, on politics. No actually moving forward on delivering on programs that are going to help Canadians. I'd like to remind the Right Honourable Prime Minister and all members of this House that this is not an avenue where we want to go down. It can easily get out of control. And I would Throw suggest that we don't go that close to the line. The Honourable Leader of the Office Order. <laughs> the Honourable Leader of the, of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, every time I mention a carbon tax election, he becomes so panicked and erratic that he loses control of himself and starts spitting out incomprehensible insults. <laughs> Canadians deserve us focusing on them. The fact that after nine years of this NDP Liberal government, we have two million people lined up at food banks, a record-smashing number. After nine years, one in four kids are going to school hungry. Before more kids go to school hungry, why can't we have a carbon tax election so that Canadians can ax the tax and afford their food? Mr. Speaker, the Canada Carbon Rebate puts more money in the pockets of 8 out of 10 Canadians. Wow, he just comes out just straight out of the gate with that trash. Absolute garbage out of Trudeau's mouth. Right across the country, it supports the middle class and people working hard to join it. Trudeau, there is no middle class. You've pushed everyone to poverty. Fight against climate change, reduce emissions, and grow the economy. His plan is to abandon the fight against climate change. The opposition. Magazine asked this question this week. Why is Canada's economy falling behind America's? Goes on to note that national income per person was 80% of the U.S. and Canada in the decade before the pandemic, and is now just 70%, the worst gap in decades. So will the Prime Minister, Prime Minister doesn't answer my questions, maybe he'll answer the economists' questions. Why is our economy falling so far behind the Americans? Is it because of his quadrupling carbon tax? Pierre came locked and loaded today with all the facts. Uh, Trudeau's got nothing. Contrary, Mr. Speaker, one of the reasons why foreign direct investment is up by 60% since 2015 is because, contrary to what the Harper government put forward, we're actually leading on the fight against climate change, on green energy, on a responsible uh, building for a sustainable future that means countries around the world want to invest. In fact, they want to invest because you keep giving billions of our tax dollars to them. Give me a break. Speaker, Canada's workers get 55 cents of investment for every dollar an American worker gets and only 65 cents for every dollar an OECD average worker gets for a net 450 billion Canadian investment dollars have poured out into the U.S. more than have come back under this Prime Minister's nine years. And The Economist points out that our GDP per capita is now lower than Alabama. And it says, and I quote, catching up to, to Alabama may soon seem like a distant dream. Oh. Why? Wow. Well, our GDP is so bad that it's worse than one state in America, Alabama. We made the choice to invest in things like dental care, like cutting child care fees in, in half. Why we've chosen to step up uh, on dental, why we're choosing to step up on pharmacare. To <laughs> he says dental, then he says pharmacare, then he goes back to dental. Oh, geez. Yeah, dental. If you're under 18 or over 65, congratulations. You might be able to get some dental care. Not only has the prime minister and his government taxed Canadians into poverty, his former environment minister called single moms and small businesses uh, arsonists because they oppose the carbon tax. Meanwhile, he ignored the warnings of his own parks department that the Jasper Valley had turned into a tinderbox. Warnings that go back to 2017, seven years ago. Repeated warnings to clear 
the brush and do controlled burns. Why didn't his government do the job and prevent or mitigate this disastrous fire? Yes. Mr. Ske Speaker, it is always astonishing to hear the Leader of the Opposition talk about the impacts of the extreme weather events related to climate change while he opposes any climate action at all. He has no plan to fight climate change. Trudeau's plan for uh, the Jasper fire there is just to keep paying more carbon tax. It'll make those fires go away, right, Trudeau? Climate change, which means no plan for affordability, which means no plan for the future of the Canadian economy. Mr. Speaker, he pretends you can put out forest fires with taxes. Mm -hmm. Clearly that has not worked. Rather, what he should have done is listen to his own officials who said that the mass buildup of fuel in the Jasper Valley as a result of dead trees needed to be addressed through controlled burns and other clearing methods and also preparation so that we would have the ability to fight the fire if and when it ever started. All of this is documented in email correspondence and now testimony at a parliamentary committee. Instead of taxing Canadians into poverty, why didn't he fight forest fires? <laughs> I hope the people of Jasper can sue the Liberals and sue them personally for this. Mr. Speaker, Jasper was one of the most fire smart communities in the country. This fire, Mr. Speaker, was a treetop fire. It jumped from treetop to treetop and threw flaming fine pine cones kilometers into the, into the, into ahead of it, uh, which is what set this burn. This is a- uh -oh, they fired the pine cones, flaming uh -oh, pine cones, kilometers. Come on, Trudeau. Kilometers? I would love to see a pine cone fly kilometers. Result of climate change, Mr. Speaker, climate change, he doesn't want to fight. <laughs> Oh, he's going full-blown drama, Trudeau. I double the Honourable Leader of the... Right, you hear that? He's like, you just insulted the people of Jasper. They sure did. Position. Mr. Speaker, that kind of erratic screaming and hollering is not going to tackle the problem of forest fires, screaming about flying <laughs> pine cones, etc. It's true, the people of Jasper were fire smart. Yep. The problem is that the government in Ottawa was fire stupid. They were warned, this government was warned repeatedly over seven years that they needed to clear the dead wood to prevent the spread of a future fire. Why, instead of bringing in a crippling carbon tax, didn't he clear away the wood and, and stop leaving a tinderbox to explode. Yes. Mr. Speaker, one of the jewels of Canada's natural beauty bur uh, burned because of climate change. And his focus is trying to blame Ottawa for that. That, Mr. Speaker, is completely irresponsible and shameful. But we have all seen that from this Conservative leader. There's literally emails of you guys talking about it and not doing anything. That's shameful. Who would rather try and rile people up and point figures than actually try to solve any of the challenges Canadians are facing either today with affordability or tomorrow with climate change. That's not leadership. I'll tell you it's not leadership. I'll tell you it's not leadership. That in February of this year, email correspondence within his government confirmed that they were cancelling a controlled burn specifically for political optics. They did not want to do control burns. They did not want to do the same kind of forest management and maintenance that Indigenous people had done for thousands of years. And they had been recommended by both people on the ground and officials in the department. The reality is he didn't do his job. He should be accountable and explain why he, why he let the valley go up in smoke and used a carbon tax to hide behind it all. Finally, some common sense here. What's going on here in the left is just appalling. These guys don't care about anything. They've destroyed Canadian lives. Across country, Jasper, the whole town, most of the town burned down. And it's like, oh, it's the, it's the climate change. We, we need to tax you more. Mr. Speaker, in this era of droughts and rising temperatures and climate change, there are certainly reasons that most reasonable people could imagine why the opting for a mechanical removal 
of underbrush instead of flaming them, uh, instead of setting them on fire, might be a better option. Mr. Speaker, the attack on experts, the attack on science, and the refusal to understand that if we do not act in fighting against climate change with everything we have, then there will be no economy of the future. There will be no Jasper to rebuild. There will be no future for Canadians. There is already no Jasper. Y you have to rebuild almost the whole town. It's like 60, 70% of the town burned down, Trudeau. Those control burns, they do them at least around where I live here. They do them in wintertime. When it's cold, it's wet, and it's snowy. They go out there and they burn all of them. They just stack up all these big piles of sticks. They burn them all. It doesn't spread anywhere. Th that's what they would be... I'm assuming that's what they would be doing in Jasper as well. It's not going to spread when there's literally snow everywhere. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. Max Carney at the moment of his appointment at the head, as the head of the economic task force of this government, said he wanted to do something and not be something. So what has he done? Well, he's now sending out fundraising letters to raise cash for the Liberal Party. Two, he's asked for $10 billion of corporate welfare to help his multinational corporation take over the pension funds of Canadians. And he's got his pal a $2 billion loan. Did the Prime Minister, yes or no, clear all of these actions of carbon tax carney with the lobbying commissioner. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, one of the things we're seeing right across the country are experts and people who've succeeded in all sorts of different backgrounds stepping up to push back against the cuts and a little vision uh, that the, Liber the Conservative Party has been putting forward. The fact is, the Leader of the Opposition is offering cuts to services that Canadians are relying on and offering tax breaks to the wealthiest, like Conservatives always do. We're there to invest. Trudeau doesn't respond to this at all. He just rambles again. You, Mr. Speaker, have said that this Prime Minister is violating the rules of the House by refusing to hand over SDTC documents on a corporate welfare scandal of $400 million that the Auditor General says involved 186 conflict of interest, where bureaucrats, top officials in this Liberal government, were giving millions of dollars to their own companies. Will the Prime Minister hand over the information to the police and if not, what's he got to hide? We really need to have contracts written. I, there was a meme on my uh, in my group yesterday. It said, why do politicians take oaths? We should really have them sign contracts. If they break their contract, like in this case, it's jail time. It's all their money. Their banks, their assets are seized. They're put in jail for 20 years for self-serving contracts, this kind of thing. Oath doesn't mean anything in this country anymore. We need people in prison for what they're doing to us. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative leader just mentioned both the police and the Auditor General. Let me say what they have said. Both the RCMP and the Auditor General have raised concerns about how this motion jeopardizes their independence in serving Canadians. The Conservative Party wants to play politics with Canadians' charter rights. We will not support that. So his idea of a charter right is that you have the right as a top government executive to take $400 million of other people's money right. and give it to your own company and then hide the criminal evidence from the police. Right. Well, Mr. Speaker, Canadians have the charter right to know where their money went. So will the Prime Minister accept your order and the vote of this House to turn over the documents to the police so that we can put the bad guys in jail and get back the money that was stolen? Speaker, once again, the Conservative Party has demonstrated that it is uh, willing to upend the independence of institutions like the RCMP and the Auditor General for political gain. That is what they are proposing to do. They want to direct investigations. They want control over, over judicial processes uh, in their details. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, that's banana republic style behavior that the Conservative Party is pushing. We will always stand up for Canadians' charter rights and the independence of our institutions. There you have it. Pierre Polyev just absolutely slaughtered Justin Trudeau in there. Just 
one after the other. Trudeau's not even unhinged at this point. Personal attacks, him saying he's nearly full of sh shame. We all know what he's trying to say there. That's not a good look for the Prime Minister of Canada. Justin Trudeau is breaking at the seams and it's, he's coming unraveled. He's He was pretty close to snapping today. Maybe it's tomorrow, maybe it's next week. It's happening soon. And it's probably because Trudeau has pushed back on the block, not giving in to both their demands. And he's probably worried now that election will be near.